Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? How uh, how was your Saturday? That was a little bit of a bumble. Um, I hope you guys are having a great start to 2019. I am two books, two and a half books into 2019. The first two books were fantastic. I am loving book three. I hope your guys' reading year is starting off with a bang and that you guys are really enjoying whatever you have decided to pick up to kick off 2019. Now, <clears throat> today's video is a book haul of all the books that have been sent to me recently from publishers and a couple that have been sent to me by authors themselves um, that I want to share with you. Now, there are going to be a couple of repeats in here from my um, 2019 release video, um, but I wanted to make sure, just in case you guys skipped that one, that I got them into another video for you because so many of these sound absolutely amazing. Um, so, as always, as I always say, get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, however you want to do this. Um, the first stack of books are already out, so get you can get them at your independent bookstore, you have your library order them, however you wanna get your books. Um, the first part of the stack, they are available. So the first book I wanna tell you about is Radiant Shimmering Light by Sarah Selecki. This was sent to me by Bloomsbury by Nicole over there, and Nicole just seems to get me. She sends me she was the one who sent me Holy Lands um, by Amantha Zether, I think is how you say her last name, um, and put a little note in it that I would cry and I would laugh. And she was absolutely right. She gets me as a reader. So she sent this one to me and I hadn't heard about it. And it sounds fascinating. So what is it about, Russell? You're just rambling on. Um, this is the story of Lillian. Lillian is a 40-year-old woman who runs an independent niche business, painting portraits of um, pets and their auras. Um, as you can imagine, that is not some business that is in high demand, so she's looking for ways to expand it when she runs into, again, her cousin, who she's been estranged from for about 20 years. Her cousin's name is Eleven. Now, Eleven runs sort of a lifestyle, how do they describe it here? feminine lifestyle empowerment brand that you can buy into. Now, the way the blurb words it, it sort of has sort of that feel of that um, pyramid, scree pyramid scheme slash cultish aspects to it. Well, Lillian wants to expand her marketing. She wants to expand her business. So she joins in and she doesn't quite know what she's got herself into. This blurb at the end has one of the best taglines that I've read in a long time. It says, how do we recognize authenticity when intimacy has been co-opted by marketing? I think that is so intriguing. I think Nicole has sent me another book that I am just going to absolutely love. So this is Radiant Shimmering Light by Sarah Selecki. And again, thank you, Bloomsbury, for sending this one to me. The next book that was sent to me <clears throat> from Saga Press is also already out, and that is Mage Against the Machine by Sean Berger. Barger? Barger. Sorry, Sean, if I said your last name wrong. This is sort of one of those books that's a sci-fi slash fantasy mixture. So what we have is a world where humanity has basically destroyed itself and magic has gone into hiding. All of the mages live in this, what do they call it, a bubble of some sort? Um... They live within a safe dome, is what they call it in the blurb. Um, our main character is young, and he is part of this group that is being raised, basically, to fend the mage colony from what's going on, sort of the um, outside world. I keep thinking of Apocalypse, um, American Horror Story Apocalypse. I don't know why, but that's what I see when I see the outside per the blurb. Um, but what they have been led to believe inside the dome is that humanity has died. Um, he also has an affinity for sort of things from the past that talks about a mage um, fat, uh, created version of Chuck Taylor's and he has Arnold Schwarzenegger posters on his wall. So I think that sounds really fun. Uh, but something happens and he winds up going on the run, going outside the dome where he finds out that humanity is not dead. There's actually a war going on. And he runs into a young woman whose name is Ni uh, Jem. Jem is a runner for the human resistance and she has also been... Um, uh, modified with technology. So she sounds sort of cyborg-esque 
in a way. And, and this is a book that is sort of going to be that story, sort of them coming together from two different worlds, figuring out what's going on. I think it sounds really fun. It's not in my normal sweet spot, um, but it kind of has a Ready Player One vibe to me. Um, the blurb inside sort of compares it to Terminator slash Harry Potter mixture. So I think it's going to have sort of that young coming of age, but I like the idea of the cyborg with the mage aspects. Um, so that's Mage Against the Machine by Sean Barger, and this is also out really nice. So thank you, Saga Press, for getting this out to me. Okay, this book came to me from Delacour, and I didn't know anything about it. And I don't really still know anything about it. And that is, look at this cover, Stronger, Faster, and More Beautiful by Arwen Ellis Dayton. Now, um, one, this cover is just a piece of art. It is fantastic. But I have to say the blurb, I'm not exactly sure what the book in and of itself is about. So I'm going to read it to you. I think it sounds fascinating, but I can't tell you exactly what the story is. It says, the future is curious. Stronger, today our bodies define us. We color our hair, tattoo our skin, pierce our ears, brows, noses. We lift weights, run miles, break records. We are flesh and bone and blood. Faster. Tomorrow has different rules. The future is no longer about who we are. It's about who we want to be. If we can dream it, you can be it. Science has made us smarter, healthier, flawless in every way. Our future is boundless, more beautiful. This is the story that begins tomorrow. It's a story about us. It's a story about who we come after us. And it's a story about perfection because perfection has a way of getting ugly. I think that sounds really fun. I wish I knew a little bit more about the actual plot so I could tell you guys about it. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. But again, I think that cover is fantastic. This is out. I think it sounds intriguing. So hopefully it will make on your list. If you're a YA reader, if you have read this, let me know. Let me know what it's a little bit more about so I can share it around. So there you go. Stronger, Faster, and More Beautiful by Arwen Ellis Dayton. And I want to thank De La Court Press for sending me this copy. I think that copy, that cover is artistic. Now, I want to say thank you so much to Bradley, I think he goes by Brad, um, who wrote uh, The Twelve Kings of, oh, I should probably get that last word. I always have to read it because um, it is The Twelve Kings, the 12 Kings in Sherakai. Um, you know, guys, I talked about that book a lot last year. I really loved it. Epic fantasy referred to me by my friend Chris over at Chris's Bookish Cauldrons. And Brad was nice enough to offer to send me book two and book three. So book two is The Blood Upon the Sand, and this is book two of the Song and the Shattered Sand series, and book three is Of Veils and Spears. And I just want to point out to you guys, so I learned, I thought originally that this was a stamp, because this is how Brad signs his books. But it turns out that that is calligraphy, and he does that himself. If that is not enough, he is these books, um, the first one was so entertaining. I am so excited to get into book two and keep going with this series. He doesn't write a thin book, so they're chunksters. They're really things that you're going to dive into and get lost in the world. I know the fourth book is coming out this year, I believe. Um, so I'm super excited about this. Um, and I want to thank you, Brad, very, very, very much. Um, I really do appreciate this and your beautiful, beautiful signature. And I'm sorry I thought it was a stamp. I should have known you would be creative enough to get this to me. Okay, now are the books that haven't come out yet. <clears throat> I'm going to try to speed up a little bit because this video is going to be long. Um, this book came to me actually this week, and it's called Smoke and Summons by Charlie N. Holmberg. And who published this? I want it. 47 North published this. Now, I don't know a lot about this book. Um, however, she wrote the Paper Magician series, which I read the first one and I really enjoyed. Um, I know I have the second and maybe the third on my shelf. I never got to them, but I really liked it. So I don't know much about her new series, but look at the, that's pretty cool. So Smoke and Summon. So I'm going to read you guys the blurb. It says, as a human vessel for an ancient spirit, Sandus lives no ordinary life. At the command of her master, she can be transformed against her will into his weapon, a raging monster summoned to do his bidding. Unlike other vessels, Sandus can host extremely powerful spirits, but hosting such creatures can be fatal. To stay alive, she must run, and in a city fueled by smoke and corruption, she finds a surprising ally. A cunning thief for hire, Roan owns a rare device that grants him immortality for one minute every day. I think that is a fantastic 
idea. This idea that for one minute you can't die every single day, fantastic. A unique advantage that will come in handy in Sandy's fight for freedom. But Sandy's master knows how powerful she is. He's determined to get her back, and he has the manpower to find her wherever she runs. Now, to outwit, outwit her pursuers, Sandy must put all her trust in Roan and his immortality device, for her master has summoned more than men to hunt her down. I think that sounds really, really fun. Um, and I really did like The Paper Magician, so I'm excited for Smoke and Summons by Charlie N. Holmberg's. This comes out February 1st. Okay, a book I did talk about in my 2019 video is The Familiars by Stacey Hall. Again, this cover is just gorgeous. This comes out February 19th, 2019. I know that these are probably not all in the right order. This is the story of Fleetwood Shuttleworth. She's 17 years old. She's married and she's pregnant and she's been unable to have an heir for her husband. Um, she then gets a letter that she isn't supposed to read that basically lets her know that the doctor has had something to do with her children not living. She becomes sort of involved with Alice, who is um, a woman who helps deliver babies, who has promised to help uh, Fleetwood deliver her baby. And But she is being pursued as a witch. Um, there's so much in this that sounds amazing, and I cannot wait to read this book. Um, and I think that cover is fantastic. So I want to thank um, Mira for sending me a copy of this. Um, I am super excited for it. Again, it comes out on February 19th, 2019, and that's The Familiars by Stacey Hall. But talk about amazing covers, guys. This cover, this is The Care and Feeding of Ravenous Hungry Girls by Anissa Gray. This comes out also on February 19th, 2019. This is the story of a group of sisters. Um, they have an older sister who is named Althea, and she is sort of the one who has raised her two younger sisters. But what happens is one day, her, Althea, and her husband are arrested. And the younger sisters have to come in to raise the child, the daughters, I want to say? The daughters of um, Althea, because the family is now in, as the back says, utter disgrace. Um, and it says, as Althea awaits her fate, Lillian and Viola, the two younger sisters, must come together in the house they grew up to care for their sister's teenage daughters. What unfolds is a stunning portrait of the heart and core of an American family and a story that is a page turner as it is in important. The back compares this to a combination of the mothers, which I loved, and the American marriage, which I really, really loved. So these are two fantastic books. High praise. I always hate when they compare something that you love because I'm worried. However, I think everything about this sounds amazing. So that's The Care and Feeding of Ravenous Hungry Girls by Anissa Gay. This come to, came to me from Berkeley. Thank you so much. And it is out February 19th, 2019. Another book that I talked about that I am super excited about is um, The Library of Lost and Found. This is by Phaedra Patrick. This is out March 26, 2019. Um, and this came to me from Park Row Books. Thank you so much. Now, Phaedra wrote um, The Curious Charms of Author Pepper, which was a pretty popular book. She has, I have a feeling, she just has that hug for your heart sensation. This is the story of a librarian. Check. This is about the story of a librarian who gets a book of fairy tales um, signed by her grandmother who has passed away. Check. As she starts to investigate this book and where it came from, she learns about her family history. Check, check. Everything about this book sounds like I'm going to absolutely love it. It looks charming and endearing. I love everything about what I just said. Um, so that's The Library of Lost and Found by Phaedra Patrick. This is out March 26, 2019, and she is just sweet as pie. So yeah, put this one on your radar. I have a thought. Um, Mammy, I think this is a book that you need to make sure that you have on your Goodreads, because I think this is going to be a book that you really like. And if you liked um, The Keeper of Lost Things, I just have that sort of feel about it. I'm going to tell you about a memoir, which I don't normally do very often, and that is The Light Years by Chris Rush. This was recommended to me by my friend Victor Lodato, who wrote a book called Edgar and Lucy a couple of years ago now, and he raved about this memoir. This came to me from FSG, and it comes out April 2nd, 2019. I don't know much more about this other than it is a memoir. And it's about a kid that um, grows up in New Jersey but disappears into what they're calling the American counterculture. I don't want to know much. I know Chris is an artist. I follow him on Instagram. I think he is immensely talented. So I'm kind of going into this one a little bit blind. But everyone I know who has already read it has raved about it. This cover 
is fantastic. This is not open. This is art. I can run my finger across it. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah, I am super excited for this memoir, and I don't normally say that about memoirs. So this is The Light Years by Chris Rush. This is from FSG, and it comes out again on April 2nd, 2019. Okay, five more? Four more. Four more. The Prince of Monkeys by Counterpoint is a book that I talked about, and I probably am going to talk about again. This is by a Nigerian author, which I have just been in love with novels out of Nigeria and Nigerian authors for a couple of years now. Um, and I can't say his name, and I don't want to butcher it, but there you go. This comes out on a in April 2019 as well, April 2nd. Um, so this is about uh, a kid growing up in middle-class Lagos in the 1980s. He has a cr close group of friends. He is exiled from Lagos, and he moves into a different part of the country and gets involved in um, a prostitution ring. It says, leveraging his connections with a notorious prostitution linchpin and political heavyweight, he begins to earn favor among the ruling elite. But just as he is about to make his final ascent to the elite political class, he reunites with his childhood friends and experiences a crisis of conscience that forts forces him to question his world, his motives, and whom he is to become. I think this book sounds fantastic. I think the cover is really interesting. So this is Prince of Monkeys. There's the author's name. I don't want to butcher it. This is out from Counterpoint Press. Thank you. I love Counterpoint. Uh, on sale April 2nd, 2019. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> gosh, you guys, so many good books to tell you about. The Lost History of Dreams by Chris Walder. This was sent to me by Touchstone and is out on February... I'm sorry, April 9th, 2019. This has a little bit more of a convoluted story, so again, I apologize for the reading. But it says, When famed Byron-esque poet Hugh de Bone is found dead in his bath one morning, the task of burying his body falls to his estranged cousin, historian-turned-postmortem photographer Robert Highstead. The chapel stipulated in de Bone's will, a stained-glass folly set on the Shoreshire Moors, was built over a decade earlier to house the remains of his beloved wife and muse, Ada, and has since remained enclosed to all outsiders, especially the rabid cult-like fans of his last book, The Lost History of Dreams. Only Ada's grief-stricken niece, Isabel, holds the key, but she refuses to unlock the glass chapel unless Robert agrees to her bargain. Before he can lay Hugh to rest, Robert must record the real story behind her aunt's ill-fated marriage over the course of five nights. Does that, I mean, come on. Everything about that sounds fantastic. So this is The Lost History of Dreams by Chris Walder. This is out April um, 9th, 2019. And thank you, Touchstone Books. I cannot wait to get to that. Cannot wait. Two more, guys. I don't know how to say this name. Nama? 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 Um, and this is by Sarah Blake. And this is out again in April, April 9th, 2019. I want to thank Riverhead Books and Sarah for getting me a copy of this. All I'm going to say about this is, one, the cover, and that this is the story of the biblical flood from the point of view of Noah's wife. That is all I needed to want to read this book. I do know that um, Sarah is, um, I want to believe, a poet by nature. I hear that the language is beautiful in this, and it's blurbed by Lenny Zumas on the front cover. You guys, what else do I need? Um, I am super excited for this. I don't know if it's going to wait that much longer on my to-read list. So that's Nama by Sarah Blake. And I apologize if I'm saying that right. My biblical names are a little weak. Out by Riverhead Books. This is out on February 9th, 2019. I have a feeling if you are like sort of these retellings of history, these books are going to be for you. Um, it's sort of like a move up from like a Circe or um, to a different time period. I'm super, super excited about this one. Last but not least from Greystone, Thank you so much for sending me Lammy by Max Porter. Now, Max Porter wrote Grief is the Thing with Feathers, which was quite a hit a year or so ago, two years ago, um, and was rightly fantastic. It was amazing. Um, I didn't know much about this other than I loved Max Porter, so here is what I know. This is the story of... Actually, what am I going to tell you much about this? Yeah, I will. I, it looks like it's written in a very poetic way as well. It says, In a village an hour from London with a pub, a church, and a red book cottage, a mythical figure known by the local school children as Dead Papa Toothwort awakens after a long nap. He is listening intently for a mischievous, ethereal boy, ethereal boy whose parents have recently made the village their home, Lanny. 
This brilliant novel thrums with archaic magic and bewitching tapestry of fabulism and domestic drama. Lanny is a ringing defense of creativity, spirit, and the gener generative forces that often seem under assault in the contemporary world, and it solidifies Porter's reputation as one of the most daring and sensitive writers of his generation. I am so excited for this book. Um, I loved Grief is a Thing with Feathers. If you haven't read that book, please go get it. It is available. It's in your library. It's it's somewhere. You can get your hands on it. Um, and I cannot wait. This actually does not come out until May. May 14th, 2019. But please pre-order it because I know you guys are going to love it as much as I do. Um, and that's Lanny by Max Porter. So this was quite a long video. That was quite a lot of books, but I wanted to make sure and get them all in there for you. I hope all of these make them on your TBR. As always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope you liked what you saw. And as always, until next time, happy reading, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!